Hi, I'm Sasha, baker, trainer, and newly certified nutritionist, and your host for today's episode of Alt Baking Bootcamp with Well and Good. Today we're gonna be making a double chocolate cake. It's vegan, it's gluten-free, and it's got a secret ingredient that you might not think to put in your chocolate cake, but we'll talk about that later. So the double chocolate in today's cake comes from making a chocolate cake and topping it with the chocolate frosting. We're gonna make the chocolate frosting a little bit later and let's dive right into the chocolate batter. As I mentioned in the beginning, it is gluten-free. So we're starting with almond meal. I've got my gluten-free flour combination that we're also going to add in. We've got quite a bit of cocoa powder right in. And then we're gonna do the coconut sugar first with the dry ingredients, but we're gonna leave the uh, brown sugar to be mixed in with the wet so that it can retain a bit of its moisture. When making a cake, you want a super smooth, silky batter, and that's gonna yield for like no air pockets in the finished product when you're done baking the cake. You find the lumps and then you just attack them. So now I'm gonna add my salt and my baking powder. There we go, triple acting baking powder <laughs> and salt. Give that a little stir. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is just create a little well right in the center. We've got half a cup of olive oil. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but this is what makes this cake so moist. The longer it sits in the fridge, the moister, is that still a trigger word, moist? <laughs> the more moist it becomes. So, go right in there with your olive oil, cool. Then the brown sugar goes right into your well of olive oil, cool. And then now we're gonna give it just a quick little whirl. You only need two cups of coffee, but who brews coffee to bake with and not to drink? I don't know, a maniac? Two cups, just enough left for me to have with my chocolate cake. You just wanna make sure all of the dry ingredients are pretty much covered. It's gonna come together really easily, so honestly, if you just dumped it right in the center, it wouldn't make a huge difference. And then you wanna just get a little whirlpool going. So easy. Just beat it until it's smooth. Again, scraping down the sides. If you're not confident in your whisk, take that spatula. Make sure that you've gotten anything that could be buried underneath. This is something that happens all the time. You pour something out and you're like, oh my God, there's still dry ingredients or flour. So the reason why it's important to make sure all of that is incorporated, because part of that could be your leavening agent or your salt and all of those things are really crucial in the chemical reactions that happen in building the volume and kind of creating the fluffiness of your cake. So get it all in there. We're back. All right, so pre-production, I have lightly oiled, just spray canola oil, and cut some parchment paper. And I'm gonna do just another quick little spray. Make sure you get the edges. You don't want that to get stuck. 480 grams per tin. It's like just thin enough to then put frosting in between and on top. And that's really the reason why I split it into two. Ta-da! Okay, literally that's it, you're done. Pour yourself a cup of coffee, set the oven to 350, make sure it's preheated before these bad boys go in, rotate halfway through. In the interim, clean up your space, grab your food processor, grab an avocado. Yeah, you heard right, an avocado. It's going into your chocolate frosting and you can thank me later. Okay, so check out my mise en place. Fancy French word for everything in its place. Use it, impress your friends with it at a dinner party, thank me later. Okay, so avocado. Yeah, so fun, right? Now, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about this ripeness, right? Because avocados go from zero to 100 real quick. What you need for this frosting is a light green center. This ring around is almost too dark. I think we're gonna be okay. If you have a avocado that's past its prime and you're like, oh, what do I do with this ripe avocado? Don't make frosting with it. It's gonna taste like avocado. It starts to develop this weird fibrous texture. Not good for frosting. 
Powdered sugar, okay, I know we wanna narrow down the amount of sugar that we're using in this. So we've got just a bit of powdered sugar and then I also like to make my own date syrup. Dates are awesome. If you use the entire thing, which I don't see why you wouldn't, there's tons of um, dietary fiber. Yes, there's naturally occurring sugar, but they're like nature's candy. And the cool thing about the date syrup that I make, which is just water and dates pureed, right? Use hot water, it makes it really nice and thin. When you're not using a super ripe avocado, it can be a little bit firm. But when you add this, it thins it out and it makes the most beautiful buttercream you've literally ever seen. We're gonna go cocoa powder and then I'm gonna give that a whirl first and then we're gonna add the rest of our slightly liquid ingredients, all right? So we have vanilla extract, almond extract. Why almond extract? <clears throat> Avocado does tend to impart flavor. If you get the ripeness just right, as we've talked about, it shouldn't impart any flavor. Cool, almond. The clear is almond, cool. The dark is vanilla. This is dark chocolate chips. Some sugar, no dairy, okay? So still vegan. Um, dark chocolate chips that I've just melted over a double boiler. Um, you've seen me do that at least two times. So we're not gonna go through that together today, but I promise if you wanna call me, I'll walk you through it, hold your hand. You could also just melt it in the microwave if you have one, 30 seconds at a time, stir in between, get it nice and luscious, you're done. I'm gonna give this a stir. I'm gonna go take my cakes out. I'm gonna leave this whirling and then it'll be done. You know that these are done because they're starting to separate. We're gonna let them cool in the pan for 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna pop them onto a wire rack until they're completely cooled. It's time. Okay, last important question. Are you a fork or a spoon user? The right answer is spoon. Okay, so we did the double the double frosting, you see this? And I would say that the second layer of frosting or the top layer of frosting is just as thick, if not thicker than the top layer of cake. Mmm, what? How is there an avocado in there? What? <laughs> it's so good. The texture of the cake is less, <clears throat> like a springy light cake and almost a little bit brownie-esque or like truffle-esque. I don't hate that. I'm super excited about that. To find the recipe in detail and the measurements in grams and cups, look below. And then when you're done doing that, subscribe to Well and Good because we've got way more amazing, delicious, avocado-friendly recipes. <laughs> we'll see you next time.